Hi, welcome to Cajun Toy Review. Today we're looking at something a little bit different, not an action figure or a set, anything like that. We're going to be looking at an accessory or a display piece, whatever you want to call it. But it is the TARDIS from Doctor Who, and this is based off the uh, 10th version of the Doctor, which was David Tennant. Um, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. I was, a, 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 I say fan, but at one point I was a freaking fan boy over it, just nuts about it. Like uh, shirts, posters, I mean, I had. Uh, a TARDIS sticker on my car, you know, I mean, I uh, I was infectious with it, about, I talked about Doctor Who all the time, and uh, I actually had all the different TARDISes up to like the, through the 12th Doctor, and um, when I moved and just stuff like that, I wound up selling all of them except for this one right here. Now, uh, you know, I just didn't have space for it, I wanted to make someone else happy, so I did like a little nice set with a bunch of the Doctors I had, and uh, but... I kept this and a couple of doctors for a couple of reasons, and uh, I want to talk about that today. Now, um, you know, if you this is the first time on this channel, we usually review like Marvel Legends, uh, NECA figures, uh, stuff like that. But um, I am a, a child of the '80s, and uh, I played with stuff through the '90s and stuff like that. So you'll see stuff pop up like this periodically. But uh, if you like this video, give us a like, consider subscribing, check out our other content. So. Without further ado, let's talk about the TARDIS. Now we can't talk about the TARDIS first without uh, talking about Doctor Who. So Doctor Who is a TV series from BBC British that started in 1963. Uh, it's about an alien who lives on Earth, uh, hiding out, who basically is a Time Lord. And they travel through time, uh, fixing things, you know, uh, exploring scientific stuff, but, you know, wind up either fixing things or getting involved in big time periods. Uh, a lot of cool aliens. Um, really, really creative storylines. I mean, there is uh, anything you can imagine from like uh, traditional mysteries to romantic to uh, zany. Just, and um, the thing about Doctor Who is he started off in 1963 as an old man. Um, his granddaughter and everything went to meet him. And I'm, you know, I'm a little rough on it, but in the junkyard where he was living, basically, in they had this phone booth in there. Uh, or I say phone booth, it's a police call box. So in Britain, uh, they used to have these a lot, and they still do, they look different. But basically it was like a 911. So they, you know, they didn't have cell phones or pay phones. So if you needed to call the police, you would use a call box like this. Well, anyway, uh, when they go inside this call box in the show, it is a giant, massive spaceship, basically. Uh, I mean, it is as big as you, can, you need it to be, as big as you can imagine. That's one of the things about Doctor Who. A lot of stuff is whatever you need it to be at the time, whether it's the sonic screwdriver or the TARDIS. But um, it is a, a, a time machine uh, that can fly, travel through space. Uh, I mean, you can do just about whatever you can imagine with the TARDIS. Now, um, the inside in the, the 60s looked a lot different. Um, and one thing about the TARDIS and the Doctor is they regenerate and they change. So... One of the cool things that BBC did is if a doctor was about to die, uh, whatever, they could regenerate their body into a new doctor. And this was basically to keep the story going with the same character uh, with a different actor. And a couple of people have put it different ways, um, the way these doctors regenerate and the way they behave and the memories and stuff like that. It is the same person, but they have a new body and new skin, so they act slightly different. So um, Stephen Moffat said, if, like, imagine you have an outfit in your closet that when you wear it, you either feel a little sexier or a little bit different and stuff like that. It affects you a little bit. Now, imagine having a different skin. So, enough said about that. So, anyway, this is the first Doctor. Um, and he was on there for a long time. For, I say a long time. Uh, a couple of years, and then they regenerated. And now, they are on the 13th Doctor. So, um, it was revitalized and stuff, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ramble and tangent too much on Doctor Who, so we're gonna get to the TARDIS. But yeah, this is the first Doctor. I got I kept four of my Doctors, so this is the first and the OG, so I had to have him. Um, this is the fourth Doctor. Now uh, this is the Doctor when I was a kid. I would see on TV. You know, we wanted to watch some cartoons or something like that. Uh, if Reading Rainbow wasn't on or Today's Special or something like that, MathNet, uh, it would be Doctor Who. And I'd watch some of it. I, it was over my head as a kid. But I'd watch them. And it really was iconic with me. I remember this guy, the fourth doctor. I remember his Tom Baker. I remember his crazy scarves. I remember seeing the TARDIS. And I just remember some of the aliens, like the Daleks and Cybermen and stuff. But uh, yeah, this is uh, considered one of the, the, the fan favorites. Um, 
one of the most iconic, one of the longest running doctors too. And if you ever uh, want some classic cheese, fun, British sci-fi, check out some of the stuff with Tom Baker. Now, uh, David Tennant stepped into the role for the 10th Doctor. He took over from Christopher Elkelson, who only did one season. Uh, Tennant ran with him. He was really, really awesome. He, uh, he was charming. He was funny. Um, he was just very, very charismatic and enjoyable. But he, he had a really unique uh, way of doing things and the way he, he proposed, proposed himself. But um, well, for me, I always loved the way he dressed. He always had these pinstripe suits or he had this really cool trench coat. But he always had these chucks. Either like these off-white chucks or these... Uh, this is not the right shade of red, but he had like these cranberry chucks. But um, he wore 3D glasses a lot. But yeah, David Tennant uh, ran with it for a while. He was a, a great doctor. And some of my favorite stories are from his era. And this is his TARDIS. Um... Matt Smith, kind of a little unknown, took over uh, for David Tennant, and um, he did really, really good. Uh, he was actually, I, I grew to love him and stuff like that. He could wail out a speech in a second, but um, he had some really cool uh, storylines as well, introduced some really cool stuff with it, um, and he was in the bow ties and fezzes, but anyway, that's our doctors that I have, and I just want to, now these do scale, these are all scaled perfectly for this TARDIS. Um, you can scale it with some of the other figures, but like Marvel Legends uh, are obviously bigger. But you can get, you know, some stuff kind of going on there if you do kind of get it right. But yeah, these are the guys for it. Um, but we're here to talk about the TARDIS. So the TARDIS is uh, basically a time machine, and um, it doesn't normally look like a police phone box. So basically when the TARDIS lands in a time period, it'll scan the environment and turn into something inconspicuous to hide. So they always said if you ran in, in Rome, it'll turn into a pillar or, you know, something like that, uh, uh, a rock or something. But it's got turned into a police box in the 60s and was damaged. And because it was damaged, it stayed in this form. And the doctor... Uh, repaired it eventually over time, the chameleon circuit, but he liked this look and stuff like that, so this became it. And, you know, it was cheap, it was easier for the show, they could just, a uh, plywood box, they just pick up and put down wherever they want, but it works and it's iconic. You know, Bill and Ted borrowed this, um, <laughs> this idea, so, um, you gotta, if you like Bill and Ted, you gotta thank Doctor Who. So, on the outside, it's just a basic, a basic phone box, uh, the TARDISes, when they regenerate, are sometimes different colors. You have like a lighter blue, brighter blue. Uh, especially Matt Smith was like a super, super vibrant bright, bright blue. Uh, sometimes the light on the top is a little different. Uh, even the roof, just the lettering. There's little differences. It just depends on uh, the era and the doctor and stuff like that. Most of them do have this sign in the front for the police. Well, they do all have the sign on the front. Some of them actually use it. This is what the phone box kind of had. used to have a phone on it to call the police. Uh, this is actually used... On periodically not very very often at all but it is used on the show um but yeah so bigger on the inside as you've probably seen or heard that but that's what this uh tardis is all about so on the outside you can walk around it all day long uh and it's just a, a, a police call box but when you go inside it's as big as the enterprise you know it's, it's huge it's got pools multi-levels you know it, um really awesome but this right here, the reason why I kept this one is it is electronic. So on the back of the scale, you got a little speaker right here. And then that's where we're going to put our batteries that are already in there for the sake of this. But uh, the outside, I like, I'm, I'm, I should have made a, uh, I didn't make basically an outline for this. So I'm, if I ramble a little bit, I'll apologize. This is kind of impromptu video. I love the color of this Stardust because it's like this, I love the shade of blue, but it's got this worn wash in it and stuff like that i really really like and the glass on this tardis has these like uh basically like it's not dirty it's just like these uh not transparent none of it's transparent but like these glasses right here are basically all like kind of like uh blurry faded i'm sorry about that uh, so on the inside this one does look different i'll post a picture of like some of the other ones kind of when i talk about it but that was the one for two seasons it's this really cool golden room with this big control panel in the middle with this green light uh the tardis does have a unique sound when it's inside there because it's humming it is a machine a living machine basically and we're gonna turn this bad boy on so first thing we're gonna see is uh it does light up on the top there are and i'm gonna lower the lights a little bit for this there are lights on the inside. So, and here's our landing. So 
So if you're a Doctor Who fan, that is your your cat call right there. That is your your chills, your boner, whatever you need. Uh, you love that sound. That's the TARDIS coming or going and stuff. Well, that's the TARDIS uh, coming in. Now when it leaves, it makes a different sound. So. And then you would be fading out if you were on the show. Like the TARDIS would start fading. And it would be gone. So we're gonna turn it back off. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna hold this in. I'm gonna turn it back on. I don't know if I gotta do this right. Uh, okay, there we go. So there's also a light on the inside. And this looks really, really good. Um, if you say you have one of your doctors or one of your figures kind of like hanging out TARDIS. Um, and this will go for several minutes and stuff like that. I used to put this on and just let it hum like that. Um, just that throbbing light, you know. With that, it does kind of see this is a massive inside interior. But uh, that's another one of the features. Now it does have a little button on the bottom right here, you can kind of see, hidden in the bricks. When you push that, you can slam the door, the TARDIS closed. This one is on a spring. It will lock in place. But this one has a little spring loaded, so, and the TARDIS is closed and quiet. Uh, one of the other features is it does have, like, the TARDIS can't fly. So we basically have on the bottom this little circle, and you would hold the top of the TARDIS like this. And just you're flying. <laughs> there's no wings. There's no aerodynamics. Don't think. Throw away that. If you're believing there's a, a, a police box that can go through time, you're not worried about aerodynamics anyway. Uh, there's also a sound of damage. So if the TARDIS gets hit, it's like a short circuit. And I don't want to be a liar, but okay. Well, maybe. There we go. I was getting nervous that I was a liar for a second, but, um, but yeah, I love this thing. Um, uh, like that's the reason why I, it's been a staple on my desk forever, uh, because it's just really cool. Um, that's really it. I just wanted to do a little quick little video and share the flight control TARDIS with you guys. Um, I hope you liked it. If you're, uh, just here for that, you search TARDIS, you popped up with me, check out my other videos, give it a shot. Um, you know, if you're interested in these, they do sell different types of TARDIS, but I don't think they have the exact same features as this anymore. I could be wrong, but like I said, um, anyway, join us for the next review. We're going to be doing some more figures. Check out the other content. If you like it, give us a like, drop a comment. Who is your favorite doctor? Um, and I'll check you in the next review. Thanks for watching.